Here's a mathematical structure that's a fun group construction activity and also fun to play with. I designed this for the 11th Gathering for Gardner conference. This happens every two years in honor of Martin Gardner, whose writings did so much to popularize mathematics. In past years, I designed permanent metal or wood sculptures to be built as sculpture barn raisings by the conference participants. But this year I didn't have that much time, so I decided to make something as inexpensive as possible, yet still large, and still having a nice mathematical story that underlies it. I considered using steel pipe strapping. This is something you can buy in a hardware store for hanging up pipes in your basement. You can make lots of cool things with it because it has holes in it and it's stiff and you can form it into lots of shapes and connect it with nuts and bolts. The problem is when you cut it, you may have sharp edges, so that didn't seem suitable. But there's something similar called plastic pipe strapping. Uh, you can also buy it at the hardware store. It's easy to cut with scissors, and you can form simple things out of it. The thing it's best at is forming a circle. It has holes in it, although they're kind of small, but you can join the circles together with little nuts and bolts to form larger structures. So I thought about what are the cool things that you can make out of circles that join circumference to circumference in a regular way. There's a family of shapes that I'll call circle crystals. I'd like to make an infinite lattice of identical circles where each circle is surrounded by its neighbors in the same way. Each has n neighbors equally spaced with the same tilt angle. So for example, the central circle here has three neighbors equally spaced around it at 120 degrees, and the plane between the central circle and its neighbors are 90 degrees. Then we can adjust that. We can say, well, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees. We can have any angle we like as long as it's the same for all the neighbors. And then ask yourself, what are the infinite structures that we can make following that rules? There's three simple ones that lie in a plane. One of them is if you have three neighbors each, there's a natural structure that everything is zero twist angle between the planes. And similarly, with six neighbors each, you get a hexagonal structure. Or with four neighbors each, you get a kind of square structure. But those are degenerate in that they're really two-dimensional. If you want to have a different twist angle, you can consider having two neighbors each. And then for any possible twist angle, there's a nice structure. It's just a helical structure. It's again degenerate in that it's basically one-dimensional, so it isn't that interesting to a sculptor. But it's nice to know mathematically that they're there. So then what's left? What's truly a three-dimensional discrete structure? Well, as you have three neighbors here and vary the twist angles, for most twist angles, you're just going to get a jumble. The thing is going to overlap itself and become dense, except there's one magic twist angle of about 70 and a half degrees. That's the tetrahedral angle. And at that angle, you get a beautiful structure. There's lovely tunnels to it, and you can look at it in different directions and see how it repeats. This actually derives from something called the 10-3A lattice. Sometimes it's called the triamine lattice. And this is a lattice in which every vertex has three neighbors that lie in a plane. And we're just putting a circle around each of the blue vertices here to make the structure. The problem is that with plastic circles, I think it would be too flexible. It wouldn't hold together well. Then there's one last structure I know of. And there may be others. I don't have a concise proof that these are the only possible ones. But the one I know is to have four neighbors each and to have the twist angle be 90 degrees. In that case, you again get a lovely lattice with lots of interesting tunnels. It's fun to look at it from lots of different directions. And I decided this would hold together well and make a really nice structure from these plastic circles. There's a mathematical story underlying it, which you should also know. There's something called the Schwartz Minimal P surface. This is a kind of an infinite soap bubble. It's a minimal surface that expands in all three directions. You're just looking at a cubical slice of it, but it's triply periodic in the x, y, and z directions. And if we open up hexagon holes in it, what's left is just a bunch of circles. And if you look carefully, you'll see each circle has four neighbors, and they're rotated at 90 degrees to the plane of the circle. So this satisfies our definition of a circle crystal. And then all I have to do is make this big. So I first made a small version. I designed a computer model of it with enough thickness, not just a surface, but a little volume to it so that you can 3D print it and have it hold itself together. Cool thing about having a 3D printer at home is that you can just build these things, and an hour later you take it off the machine, and you can hold it in your hand. When you look at it from different directions, you see lots of wonderful tunnels. Depending on which direction you look from, there's tunnels that form kind of a square lattice, or if you look in the diagonal direction, you'll find a hexagonal lattice, and in between there's lots of other directions. So this is a fun thing about it that gives you a flavor for what the large structure will look like. Another cool thing you can do with it is to dip it in soap. The soap films cover over these saddle-like hexagons to reproduce the Schwartz minimal peak surface. You have to pop the little films that form over the circles if you want to just reconstruct the minimal surface. And then we're ready to reproduce this on the large scale. 
So my plan was to make this about a meter in diameter. Rather than making a cubical part of the infinite lattice, I decided to make a spherical part so that it would bound. So I just kept the circles whose centers lie within a half meter of the origin. And counting this up, it turns out that there's 192 circles in this region using uh, six inch circles. And I could print out the different layers. So there's a central layer, which is like the main slab, and then three layers on each side of that, seven layers total in the overall design. So on the day of the construction, all we had to do was follow these blueprints, make loops out of the plastic strips, screw them together at 90 degrees between them. Uh, we started with the central slab and worked up one hemisphere a layer at a time before turning it over and doing the other half. We could fit about a dozen people all around the work area, but over several hours, about an hour and a half, uh, many people came and went, so lots of people got to participate. Everything went as planned. There's over 300 nuts and bolts. We had to get them all in, tighten them up, check that everything was tight at the end. But then we did a couple of test rolls. We found that it bounces very nicely. So we could declare the whole construction a success. And then finally, the ultimate driveway test. This was so much fun that we did this at least 20 times. It just kept rolling down this hill over and over again. Uh, we lost a few nuts and bolts along the way, so it began to fall apart. That's something that we have to address if we do this in future events. But overall, I'll declare this construction quite a success.